And so I had these moments in my life where I could tell that mentality doesn't sit well with people. But in transitioning out of that and being like, you know what, I'm just going to be the dog. I'm just going to be the lion that I am. I realized that like, if those people got offended by it, they're not the people that are going to be on my side. Mm -hmm. The people that are going to be on my side would be like, let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's win. I'm going to be on James' team because we are going to win. Welcome back to the Hard But Worth It podcast. Today we have a friend, James Bathia. And lots of ways that we could make the introduction today. But I think uh, football might be the appropriate way to start this because we have in our presence a former NFL player trying to decide if I need an autograph today or or who, who we're going to have this conversation with. But let's... I just, I'm curious to start, like, just hearing your football story, so many have this ambition of playing a sport um, and maybe going pro, and, and, and you did it. So pull us into just that part of your story. When did it start? And just take us to going pro and maybe the arc in that. And then from there, we can just kind of pick up the conversation. But I think, too, what we know about you is a lot of what you learned – in those years ha have shaped you to who you are today. And so it'd be fun to have that conversation day. So football, when did it start? Uh, started early on, I was about six years old. Uh, and I, my dad played football, so I wanted to play football. Mm -hmm. So I played Pop Warner, um, uh, naturally found out that I was fast. They hand the ball off to James and that James just sprints as fast as they could. And that's when I learned that I was fast. The outside <laughs> world told me I was fast, so nice. I just Therefore, so I, yeah. I just stuck with it. <laughs> <clears throat> and so that kind of stayed with me. I ran track, um, uh, went on to high school, um, uh, did really well in high school, uh, got a scholarship to UC Berkeley, um, uh, decided to go to UC Berkeley because it <clears throat> was the number one public school in the nation at the time. So kind of like a twofer. Yeah, <laughs> got totally. To football, nice. but yeah. also um, – uh, people think I'm smart because I went to UC Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> Not true, <laughs> uh, but I do work hard. <laughs> uh, What'd you study when you were there? Um, uh, two things. So yeah. I went in as a computer science major. Uh -huh. um, once I got there, I realized it wasn't just creating video games. Um, <laughs> it was a lot of code writing. It turns out. Well, it turns out creating video games yeah. is a lot of code writing. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. I thought I was going to just create video games. That's not, it was like zero, 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 one, one, zero, 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 yeah. one, right. zero. So right. There's a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, so I moved to architecture and became uh, an architect, uh, uh, architecture major. So I'm curious, how fast did you run the 40? Back in the day, really fast. Like what was your what was your uh, time? So I was a four three four guy. Four three four. Dang, that's fast. What position did you play? Back so I was a running back in high school, and then um, actually transitioned to cornerback because I thought I would have a better opportunity to make it to the NFL as a cornerback ah, than a right, running that back. Okay. Um, just because it's, I mean, just numbers. There's one running back normally. <laughs> There's three to four, yeah. I mean, five, six, depending on what position you're playing on the field. I thought it was the a likely position for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I transitioned to wow. playing cornerback wow. um, in, in college. And then how did, like, what team did you play for and what did that look like going pro? Because there's so much that happens. You know, you play high school competitively. Yep. And, you know, that that's fun. But most don't ever make it beyond that. That's kind of their glory days. You know, yep. it's Uncle Rico saying – I could have thrown yeah. a football over yeah. the mountains there, but you had this, you had this opportunity to then go pro. How did you know that? What, did you have scouts watching you? Like were your coaches it's, pushing you? Like how did that happen? That's an interesting question. Yeah. <clears throat> because I always knew I was going to the NFL. Huh? Like from the time I left high school, I was like, Oh, I'm going to the NFL. And it, I looking back at it, Throughout my career, I honestly always thought I was the best player on the field. Hmm. Like the mentality that I just was the best. But now, being 40 years old, 
I look back and I go, I wasn't the best. <laughs> like I wasn't even close to the best. Even when I was on NFL teams, I was like, if they just gave me a shot, I'm the best player out here. Hmm. Wow. I, I just had a I don't even know I don't know how that happened, where that came from. But I look at it now and I go, well, how did I fool myself to thinking that I was the best player on the field? Mm. And you're talking on NFL teams. Yeah. yeah. I I believed in my head that Does, I was the best player. When you were a player. kid, did that thought apply to other things as well? Or was it just football where you thought that was the case? Um, I, I think I knew that if I put my mind to something, I could be the, the best, best at whatever I did. It sounds like you're saying, I knew if I put my mind to anything, I'd be the best. Yep. And then you put your mind to football. It's because I was good at football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it sounds like you had a, a precondition of going, whatever I put my mind to, I could be the best at. Yeah, and I don't know where that came from. How, I, I, I thought yeah. everyone was like that. Right. I thought everyone thought that they were the best at everything <laughs> until I was talking to somebody and like, James, that's, that's... Like, that's not how people think. <laughs> like, not everyone wakes up thinking they're going to win at everything. And right. I'm like, what? That's, that, that's crazy. Why not? Yeah. I was like, right. so when you play board games, you don't think you're going to win? They're like, no, there's a 50-50 chance. I'm like, no, there isn't. That's right. There, there's a chance that I'm going to win, and there's a chance that you're going to lose. Those yeah. are the. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. You want to play pinochle, ping pong, eyeglass toss, it doesn't matter. There so you go. In, in, I literally you thought lose, I was going to win. What would happen? Because, wait, hang on. Yeah. Did you ever lose anything? Of course. Okay, good. I just yeah. <laughs> so, so when that would happen... Right, you're playing ping pong with somebody and you lose. I would dissect the crap out of it oh. and figure out why I lost. Make sure that never happened again. Yep. Yeah. And then if it happened again, what would happen? It, it, I always made adjustments. Yeah. So I would always pivot and make adjustments, whether it was ping pong, football. I really learned to dissect things on a day to day basis and figure out, oh, if I just let me tweak this and see how that will affect it. Oh, if I tweak this, let me see how this. I mean, you're talking about from board games to hmm. essays in class. Hmm. <laughs> I would figure out how to tweak something, and yes, you lose, but those are learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I if I pivoted, <clears throat> so so it wasn't it wasn't that I was gonna lose. It was at a certain point I'm gonna win. Yeah. Hmm. So that I didn't. So when you say lose, it kind of throws me off because it. <laughs> I, I know that I take it. You just didn't win yet. Yes. Right? That's exactly. That's right. I just didn't win yet. Yeah, but and it's so coming. I, it's coming. Uh-huh. And that's, uh -huh. yeah. That's, I will win. I will at some point. So for, for our, our listeners, uh -huh. just real quick, we got to just close this loop. What team yeah. did you make oh. it into the NFL or, or teams? Yeah. So I was bottom of the barrel, uh, barely made it. Um, but I started with the Raiders. Uh, then was with the Detroit Lions for a year. Okay. And then uh, was hurt on the Washington Redskins for a year. And then I ended out at Buffalo. Um, nice. But mostly just scraping <laughs> to keep my head above water. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Every Tuesday was cut day. So every Tuesday I was, I was worried that I was going to get sure. cut. Sure. So like what I'm doing now is kind of a joke. Because when I was in the NFL, every Tuesday – my yeah. salary could be gone. So like every day I went on the field, I had to make a play. Yeah. Because I was like, dang, if I don't make a play, I'm getting cut. So every time I walked on the field, I was like, I got to make a play. What's funny is I still live like that. Wow. I still have that like, I need to make a play today. Wow. Did you think that way? Like, that brings all that into focus because of every Tuesday's cut day. That's a bit of a unique yeah. experience to live it, in. Yeah. But did you, did you have that somehow on board during college? Like that, that drive to every day, every time I'm on the field, I'm going to make a play. Well, in college, it's a little different because yeah. it's, I had the mentality if I didn't make a play, I wouldn't be starting. Okay. So very, very similar mentality. You make a play, you make plays or you go home. You're going to, you're not going to get cut. You're going to sit on the bench. Exactly. Might as well Which home. is might as well. I mean. What's the point? Exactly. There's no way to get into the NFL if you can't play in college. Right. And so for me, is I always had the mentality, not even just every day. In college, it was every session, every period that we played, whether it was one-on-ones or team or seven-on-seven, seven, I'm making a play. So I can imagine a lot of people feeling like that's enormous pressure. Um, but I'm wondering if how you experienced that. I, it's the normal. Right. Like I have a ton of pressure at work right now. That It feels normal to me. 
And I know it's not, <laughs> but right. it feels. How do you carry that pressure? Dissecting my technique mm -hmm. and figuring out how to execute at a high level on mm -hmm. a day-to-day -day basis. And that's, it's different all the time. It's different every day, whether I'm dealing with a city inspector or I'm dealing with my family mm -hmm. or I'm dealing with a coworker. It's dissecting how I do things so that ultimately as a team or as a group, we can succeed. And it's the same thing I was talking about. It's pivoting, it's making adjustments so that it's not when, it's not whether we're gonna win, we're gonna win. It's just a matter of time before we make adjustments and yeah. then we go, oh, this is it. There this is, is the formula, mm -hmm. this, is, this is where we need to be to be successful. Mm -hmm. so, so back in your college days, we even, even go back to your high school days yep. and, or in the pro, but give us give us a moment when you when you daydream about the highlight reel in your head or in your in your in your past. Give us a play where you replay and go, man, that was that was a moment. My name it, my name was in lights. Hmm. You know, I, I had this pickoff or I had this, you know, this run and it was this and that and it saved the game. Whatever it is, is there a highlight that you go back to? Go, man, that was amazing, incredible. Man, that's it is interesting. Um, I <laughs> I celebrate the wins very short. Like I I when you ask me that question, I would have to think about that. Okay. Um, I remember times where I fumbled the and failures. lost the game. Wow. Um, interesting. I I remember the times where deep ball didn't get my head around touchdown end of the game. Um, but I don't remember those highlight moments where, um, and, and I think it's, it might be back. This is the, I've never thought of this, but it might go back to when I was a kid when my dad, I mean, I would score a lot of touchdowns and he said, when you get in the end zone, you act like you've been there before. Hmm. So I, I don't, it wasn't a big thing. Like now they score touchdowns and they're doing dances and celebrating. You act like you've been there. You, you give mm -hmm. one to God and you move on. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't a. I did my job. Yeah, and I and I mm -hmm. do celebrate my wins, but they're not loud. I pat myself on the back in my mind and I move on mm -hmm. and keep trying to find ways to win. Yeah. But it would take me some time to sit down <laughs> and pick out moments in my life where where um, in football I just yeah yeah I don't have the. Ed Bundy, four touchdowns, one game moment <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that I could talk to you guys about. Um, it's more so I do remember those times where where I missed it, and I was like, dang, if I would have, if I could have, mm -hmm. we would have. Right. Um, and whether good or bad, that's... that's Yeah. There's a highlight reel and there's a blooper reel. There is. Right. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, can, I can, if you gave me time, I could pick out some highlights. Sure. But I can for sure, like... The bloopers, I'm like, dang, those are the those are the opportunities where mm -hmm. where I, if I would have adjusted, I could have made a play or we could have been greater mm -hmm. or great. Yeah. I remember on I was a tight end in high school and it, our team sucked. So we were in <laughs> Southern California, a small private school, but we played all the big schools. Right. So we were we were playing uh, Pasadena High School and I still remember the running back's name, Lester Gamble. <laughs> Because he his name was called out so many times <laughs> through the announcer's booth because he scored sixty three <laughs> points that day and, and we scored zero. <laughs> so that's that's a memory right there, Lester Gamble. That'll leave a mark on you know. Me. But it's just funny how um, you know football shapes you whether no matter what sport you play. But for me, football, baseball was another one. But so much of what you learn in life can come through sports yeah. and you do carry a lot of those yeah. into your professional life. And I'm curious, yeah. how do you, how do you see some of those things happening? You, know, you talk about your father, uh, I'm sure your, your upbringing has a part to play yeah. in who you are today, but then the coaches, yeah. team members and things like that. So pull us in today. What are you doing now? Yeah. And then maybe we can work back to connect the dots on mm -hmm. that. Uh, professionally doing, professionally yeah. what are you doing today because you're not playing football <laughs> no right no <laughs> uh so i'm i guess my main job is a general contractor uh i call it i say i work for a general contractor firm we build large um luxury apartment complexes in the bay area and we do massive custom homes so i technically work remotely 
and I manage and project manage those projects here. But since I've been here in the last four years in Reading, I've been able to uh, build a few custom homes here and there and then get more into the development game. Um, so building some spec homes in Reading, what I call a micro subdivision, uh, and then some, I think, really cool uh, custom homes, yeah. which kind of ties into that architectural background that, mm -hmm. that um, I love so much. Uh, so that's what I do. Yeah. How did you find yourself in that work? Yeah, honestly, I didn't even know. I went to UC Berkeley. That That's not a thing. They don't have construction management yeah, program construction technology. <laughs> at, yeah. at UC Berkeley. Yeah. I didn't even know that managing construction sites was a thing. Yeah. Um, I Before tiny houses got big, mm -hmm. me and my wife decided to turn our detached garage into a tiny house. 400, it was 386 square feet. I renovated myself off of YouTube. Mm -hmm. Had never touched a hammer before in my life. <laughs> and at, at one point, <clears throat> I had all the windows taped up because we were all shooting mud on the walls, which once again, I had never done before. Watch a few YouTube videos and now I'm a pro. Mm -hmm. So all the windows are covered. And for weeks, I was out there for 12 plus hours. Mm. And my wife would have to come inside the garage mm -hmm. and say, Hey babe, I think it's time to shut it down. I'm like, what? It it's only six o'clock, and she's like, no, babe, it's one in the morning. Wow. <laughs> but I found that I just loved it. Huh. I love the create the creativity of it. I love taking like just a garage or a space, a yeah. piece of land, and turning it into something useful and beautiful, um, something that people can live in and enjoy. Yeah. And it that like was the starting point. And so I started doing little small handyman jobs. And um, my wife's best friend at the time knew that I had started doing construction stuff. <clears throat> and she goes, hey, you should talk to my dad. My dad does, like, kitchen remodels. And I go, I, I don't want to push brooms for anybody. I went to UC Berkeley. Like, <laughs> I'm not pushing brooms for anybody doing kitchen remodels. And so I said, you know what? Let me take a shot. I'll go meet him. So I go to meet him. He doesn't do small kitchen remodels. The first project I go to is eight lots, um, an eight lot subdivision in the Oakland Hills. Mm. Uh, each house sold for just over two point five million dollars. So this is not, mm -hmm. and this was this was twelve years ago. Yeah. So this wasn't. No. This was wasn't a, homes. exactly. Yeah. 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 So it was a, it was actually a, a custom sub custom home, home subdivision. Home. Yeah. And it was some of the prettiest stuff that I ever seen. Mm. The thought, the detail. Absolutely loved it. And I got hired, and that kind of was the takeoff on this. Like, gotcha. I just didn't know that you could do that. I didn't know that you could work as a project manager and build cool stuff. Yep, you absolutely can. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd have known. <laughs> but yeah. because I went to Berkeley, that's you were more into like technology and sciences and mm -hmm. doctors and lawyers, and that's like the route that people went mm -hmm. biology. If I went to Texas A&M, yeah. they would have had construction management. And right. I would have said, huh, what's that? And I would have taken a class or a course and Loved probably fall in love with it. Yeah. <laughs> so in your um in this in your in the process of going from football to construction, right? Yep. Um, we leave an environment, I'm assuming, that is high well, I'm not assuming this. Football's highly competitive. Right, and it it's designed for people who have the mindset that you have. Every time I got to make a play, I've always got to figure it out. Yeah. Um, there's always someone watching. We're always watching film. We're always improving. And if you don't have that mindset there, you probably aren't going to make it. Right? In what? In football. Oh yeah, yeah, correct. Yes. Well, yes. high school football might be a little different, but it, yeah. it just ramps and it gets more and more. Yes, correct. More and more intense. Um, I actually had a friend a long time who played for the Raiders. And he told me, he said, you know, in, in high school, I was the best kid on the field. In college, I just ran over people. When you get to the NFL, though, you can't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has always been the best person on yep. the field. And now you finally found your people. And it takes a whole different level of mm -hmm. skill and all that kind of stuff. Um, how does that – so that world is designed for this mindset right, yep. uh, that, that you carry, right? But when you come out of that, it's got to feel something like going from this this – almost like coming out of the military into civilian land or yeah, something like that. I don't know good. if that's the right metaphor. No, that's, but that's the fair. rest of us don't quite live that way. Yeah. We pretend to. We try to. We do our best, right? 
What was that transition like as you entered this construction field and this new world of project management and yeah. getting married and having yep. kids and like, what's it like with the civilians? I, I actually think um, for, I want to say about for four or five years, I really tried to um, subdue that mentality. We, I call it the lion mentality. Mm -hmm. I really try to subdue it. Um, and it got to this breaking point. I met my wife at, uh, I met <laughs> I met my wife as a, we were um, working on an ambulance together. Um, and the reason I liked that job is because all I had to do was show up. Mm -hmm. All I had to do was button seat and I got paid. Mm -hmm. But what happened is <clears throat> in the progression of trying to subdue who I was, I was like, dude, this isn't me. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't just show up. Showing up's not enough mm -hmm. for me. For some people, it's good. I'm not knocking it. Mm -hmm. Some people, just showing up to work is great. It wasn't for me. I remember sitting in the ambulance going, this is not it. Like, I need something that pushes me, that um, that that makes my creative spirit, like, be hungry. Mm -hmm. And I think at the, the moment when I decided to get out, <clears throat> It was actually an internal thing where I looked at myself and I realized that I was a, I had been on teams my whole life and I was a team player. Mm. And if I continued to hang out with hyenas, that I was going to become a hyena. Mm. And it was literally the breaking point for me. I'm like, I got to get out of here because I'm amongst hyenas who are just okay with leeching off of the success. of. That's what I felt. Mm -hmm. Whether that was happening or not, that's what I felt. That was yeah. just okay with leeching off of the stuff that was happening, the environment. And I'm like, this is just not me. Like, I'm a lion. Like, this is, I, but I learned that about myself, that if I put myself in an environment where everyone else is doing something, that I will slowly become right. that thing in which I don't want to be or that's not who I am. Right. And so I immediately, <clears throat> I literally quit. <laughs> I moved myself out of that and started, like, literally saying, you know what? It's okay to be a lion. I, it's okay to just be who I am, and if people don't like it, then they can kick rocks. Mm -hmm. But I, but I'm gonna be who James is. So who is James without football? Um, James without football is just a winner. I think that's the <laughs> that's that's the answer that I thought of immediately when you said that. Uh -huh. um, but when I think about who James is outside of football, I think of a story. Um, or an idea, um, maybe not a story, but um, not many people know this about me, but I used to rush home from football games Saturday night um, after college football games to go watch Trading Spaces. <laughs> so, so who James is yeah. <laughs> yeah. outside of football is someone who wants to build, someone who wants to create, someone who wants to design, develop, that's that's who I am. That's why yeah. I went. That's why I went from computer science to architecture, architecture, because I wanted to build beautiful stuff. So why did that need to be caged or stifled or put down when you come out of football into the? I keep saying yep. the civilian world, right? <laughs> Your first attempt to try to figure out what to do with this was to shove it down, get it, yeah. quiet it. Nah, nobody wants this. Yep. Right. Why does being a winner need to be silenced? Well, and I and I think it's because that that mentality. If, if, if spoken or if exuded the wrong way, really could get people to like, like, why, like stand off. We don't Here, like winners. No, no. Here's a great example. Okay. I was <laughs> playing board games with some of our church friends, uh -huh. um, and <laughs> just, just it just came out of my mouth naturally. And then we were picking teams, and I said, oh you guys should come over here so you guys can be on the winning team. And it actually offended everybody. <laughs> yeah. It, like, but to me, I was like, what? We're going to win. Right. That's right. And, and then the pastor was like, oh, that's, he like spoke he, up and said, hey, it's okay. That's just, how that's James just James. Works. That's yeah. just how his brain works. But he doesn't, he doesn't mean to offend you guys. Mm -hmm. But I could feel this like, like we're playing a board game. And right. I'm like, you guys are playing a board game. <laughs> I'm trying to win. And it was it was like, it could have been shoots and ladders. Yeah. I mean, it, it didn't matter, matter to me. But I literally was like, oh, you guys should come over here so you guys could be on the winning team. And it literally offended everybody. Right. And so I had these moments in my life where I could tell that that, um, that, that, that mentality 
doesn't sit well with people. But in transitioning out of that and being like, you know what, I'm just going to be the dog. I'm just going to be the lion that I am. I realized that like if those people got offended by it, they're not the people. They're not the people that are going to be on my side. Mm -hmm. The people that are going to be on my side would be like, let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's win. I'm going to be on James' team because we are going to win. Mm -hmm. And I just realized that that is. Well, they're actually saying James is going to be on my team because I'm going to win. The, 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 right? Or the vice versa. Exactly. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That is exactly. Those are the people when we yeah, talk about being sure. lions and hyenas. It's like, I'm, I, don't, I only hire lions. Mm-hmm. And I really do try to surround myself with lions. There's nothing wrong with hyenas. They're part of the ecosystem. We need them to survive. Every We need it. But that mentality of like making sure that I'm around lions, that the only people that I hire is lions. The, if <laughs> When I hire somebody, if they don't say that they want to take my spot in the next five to ten years, the good there's a good chance that I'm not going to hire them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want that dog in you. Like, I want, I want you to look at me and go, I want your spot. Because mm-hmm. if you take my spot, that means I have less work to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which means I could go into another. You get to elevate. I, yes. Yeah. And then Which if, is I the get, game you're playing anyway. if I get five you're or six people. You're leaving that spot anyway. If I get five or six people yeah. who, who want my spot, we are winning as an organization. That's right. The first thing I told the owner of our company is I'm just so you know, I'm coming after your spot. <laughs> and he laughed at me. I said, don't laugh. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> and it, I was 27. I had never even looked at a, I, had, I knew nothing about project management or construction. And, I was, and he said, oh, what's your plan in five years? I said, probably not in five years, but my ultimate goal is I'm taking your spot. <laughs> and he just laughed. Yeah. One of the things that I um, that you're playing with here that I find is a repeating pattern in our development as as people is we we get into these environments when we're young where this um, this thing comes out in us right this, yep. and everybody's got a version of everybody think not everybody many people have a thing everybody has a thing <laughs> some people don't know it but they have this thing that is. Um, it's, it's their voice. It's their way that they do the world, right? And it's common to hear them say, I thought everybody thought like that. Yeah. Are you kidding me? That's that's not unusual. That's that's not your normal. It's that sort of thing, right? But when we're young, it has a tendency to get displayed in ways that are immature because right. we're immature, yep. right? Um, and so it actually can do some damage. It can hurt people. It can cause... Yeah moments that are like oh, i'm not super proud of how that happened or how that mm-hmm. went and so one of our early stage tools to deal with that is to stifle it yeah because it's actually the thing we have our hands wrapped around Correct. it is the only thing we've got so to speak so it's, so we have to take it and kind of go okay i'll put that away cuz and we often get feedback where people say stop doing that yeah that hurts <clears throat> right that's and, so is it social norms are we learning social norm, we, norms? Just, yeah, to a large degree. I think what we're being told, I think the language we're often that is used in those moments is often unhelpful. Stop doing that. Yeah. What would be much better is say, stop doing that in this kind of situation. Yep. But, you in know. In this context, yep. Yeah, th- th- that didn't work here, mm-hmm. but over there it's fantastic. Yep. Right, that sort of thing. And it takes us some time to figure out how to be willing to risk to bring this thing back out. Yep. And go, actually, no, this is what I do. Yeah. And there's a difference between this is the only thing I do. Correct. And this, and I know when to do this. And maybe a board game isn't the right time. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, for it's, that, it's not. Right? No, it's but, not. But for that lesson to be, oh, I should never do this again? Yeah. Well, that's too much, right? But, but wouldn't you also agree for a moment that everyone has a lion in them? Right? Like, like thinking about like there's... <laughs> Depends on what we mean by lion. Yeah. But there, there's, this, there's this thing in us to be wild. Oh. And, oh. and to, yeah. to pioneer and to go after a thing that, that we uh, would need to be courageous yeah. for. But for whatever reason, yeah. some of us suppress that. Yeah. And we tame it down so, so controlled that it never is expressed in the way that maybe it's intended. And as a result, we know that people um, lose their way, um, they resent, yep. they they harbor bitterness. But in a sense, though, if if we think about the design in people and how we we are intrinsically motivated, 
wouldn't couldn't we almost say that that tapping into that intrinsic thing is a bit wild and liony like um i remember reading a book i can't remember the name of the book but this guy has a, a moment where he's visiting like the zoo in new york or somewhere and he's he's fascinated by the silverback gorillas and then it dawns on him that these silverback gorillas are all docile and tamed contained in a cage and so the experience is fascinating because here is this potential force of nature being completely suppressed that if in the wild mm -hmm. would it take on a whole different form but they've actually grown accustomed yeah. to a way of living that is so not natural mm -hmm. So I'm getting at this thing like, yeah. yes, there's a lion and you're a lion, but it's part of that you saying, I'm, I'm not going to settle for what I know isn't what my potential is or what my passion is. And I'm going to choose to jump in and author, mm -hmm. create. Yep. And is that the wild we're talking about? Or is there something different yeah, in the lion? You there's know what I mean? definitely something different. Is there? I, I love I love your mindset or how you how you're thinking of it because I actually think you're right. I think I think everyone has that thing that they want to do and if everything was perfect and if everything was easy, they would go after it. Mm -hmm. I think that what I'm talking about is a lion is a straight mentality. It's a it's a mentality that regardless of what happens um you will eat um it's it's like the gazelle versus which i'm sure you guys have heard this yeah. but it's the gazelle versus the lion it's it's the process of hunting the process of eating is as important as just eating some people like to just eat some people like to go to the grocery store and buy a ribeye and eat it but there's other people who like the process of going and executing and losing and winning and finding how the gazelle gets there, or finding where the deer runs or finding the corners. The pro it's, it's the process of the hunt that is almost as important as just eating. Yeah, I don't, I've never had a podcast with a lion, but it is great when lions eat, but part of who a lion is is their mentality and what they're doing and how they're hunting and how they're eating and how they get to that point. It's not about just, I wanna eat. Everybody wants to eat, which I think is similar to what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Is like everyone wants to go after that thing and be able to eat, but are you willing to do the process and do you have the mentality to go after it regardless of what it takes? And I think that's the difference between a lion and a gazelle or mm -hmm. a hyena is like, do you have that mentality just regardless of what happens? Sure. And I know a ton of guys, regardless of what happens, who will go after it. But I know some other people who are okay with just eating. I want to split the baby here a little bit. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I think in part you're describing is competitiveness, not which is personality driven. Mm -hmm. There's in, in part of what you're describing, this, the winner, when, when you talk about the lion through the lens of the winner, I will win. There's That's a competitive drive that I hear you speaking from, okay. um, which is a, which is part of this thing, yeah. right? And not everybody has that. There, I have, I am, um, I have friends like yourselves who I just watch you play games and navigate the field, and there's this competitive thing that you do, and then when I join you, I'm like, yeah, I don't have that. <laughs> I just don't have that, and I don't. My um, older sister has it. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I've learned. I've, yep. I've learned about that. <laughs> and we can actually test for this. There's a oh, okay. in, in personality profile and traits. So, so there's that. Then there's this. Um, this other thing that we're, that, that, so I think I'd like to set that and say that's different than what yeah. Mitch is talking about. But I think there's a way in which what you just said about the process of hunting versus eating that I think shows up outside of competitiveness in different ways. Yes, I right? agree. Which is what I think Mitch is talking about. Yes. Um, and if you, and what I think is interesting about people who are highly competitive is sometimes they actually end up eating the wrong thing. Oh, for sure. Right? Very because much so. Because they're so, it's like they're, they're addicted to the process. Well, my cat is one of these. Yeah. My cat, my cat kills every day. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because yeah. he's addicted to the process yes. of the hunt. Yes. Yeah. Right? 
we we actually, we actually think he's a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because he kills he kills and then he'll he'll catch something. He plays with it for an hour. Yeah. Like a lot of times, I go rescue thing. I'm like, I'm gonna smash your yeah. head because, <laughs> dude, you're you're torturing the yeah. poor thing, right? Okay. Because he loves the hunt. The he process. loves the hunt, That's and right. so it's this idea I that love your cat. Oh, he's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you would. <laughs> that sounds horrible. This is where self-incrimination is something we have to avoid. <laughs> um, so that competitive hunting spirit can be misused yeah. in a way that would be the scar instead of the Mufasa yeah. narrative, right? Yeah, that's good. Okay, but then there's this thing that Mitch is talking about, which I think shows up... Um, well, Maslow puts a Maslow the uh, Abraham Maslow did the the hierarchy of needs puts a frame on this, and he says when people are navigating up through the different levels of need and they get to self actualization, one of the things that emerges is this spirit that you're talking about. When you get somebody unstifled sufficiently that they can show up as the highest and best version of themselves, which is what he means by self-actualization. This thing emerges, and all of a sudden that person becomes, and he would say self-actualized would be his word, yep. but he talks about they become creative, they become generous, yep. they become, and it's this movement out of what we might call hyena land of just survival yeah. into this generous, driving, driven, giving, creative, but not necessarily competitive, unless that is the highest and the best use of them, yep. right? Does that make sense, that distinction? Sure yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I watch, I watch people who are stifled, and they are this. They, they don't have language for how to be a lion, and they think being a lion looks a particular way. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the warrior. It's the you know all that kind of stuff. And they and when you start to get them into a space where they can have their version of this. Wait, everyone doesn't think that way. It's like no, dude. That's you. Yeah. That's your distinctiveness on display. Yeah. And they start to deliver it to the world. I'm not sure lion would be the metaphor they would identify with hmm. in that case, because I think the competitive nature of lion is very, and the the hunt and all that, right? Yeah, but there's I think a merger I, there. But I'm also not an animal. <clears throat> well, no, so, it's, it's a metaphor. So no, no. So so I think the um, as you were saying that, I think one of the things that came to mind is I ate a lot of the wrong stuff. Along I, the I way. Love, yes. Yeah. I love that you brought that up because I did. I ate a bunch of stuff that I shouldn't have eat, eat, eaten mm -hmm. because I was going after something so hard. Right. I mean, it was, I mean, I could take you down the, the rabbit hole of stuff that I did from firefighter to lawyer mm -hmm. to nurse to PA. And I did everything at 110%. Right. And then, when I, and then when I found out what, like, I felt like God put me on earth to do. That's. And then I could go after that with the same competitive mindset, the same competitive mentality, that lion mm -hmm. that we're talking about, mm -hmm. is an absolute game changer. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, no, but I love, absolutely love what I do. Yeah. And it's not work. I feel like it's hard, mm -hmm. but it's not work. Right. And that's yeah. the, when that moment happens for people, right? And it, it doesn't happen for everybody. No. Some people don't put the work in. Some people's circumstances make it incredibly difficult. But when it does, what you find is they all of a sudden are launched towards something, and you can't stop them. Yeah. They're going for it. They start to take risks that they've never taken before. They show up vulnerably in ways that you haven't seen them do before. It's that 110%. Yeah. And it is not easy. In fact, it might even be harder in some ways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right? Very much Because so. they're yeah. risking more. Yeah. But it, it's that feeling of worth it emerges. Mm -hmm. And in that case, I don't know what the right, like in the animal kingdom, we might have multiple versions of metaphors we could attach to it. But let's just stick with lion. They all of a sudden become ravenous in, in their pursuit of it. Of one, of what if it was one animal? What do you mean? I mean, as we're talking about in the animal kingdom, like what mm -hmm. if a lion only, only wanted gazelle right tons of different animals out there yeah oh for a ton yeah, of different yeah. Yeah. you know mm -hmm. but they only want gazelle yeah and they learn how to <laughs> they figure it just out just hunt gazelle yeah and an absolute beast at it yep i mean that's... and then there's a well yeah <laughs> this metaphor breaks down because we're not really talking about tooth and claw <laughs> no and and, and yeah. uh and the survival instinct and stuff like that it's actually about you come to a spot where you figure out, like for you, this ability to, to do not just construction, but to manage and develop projects, yeah. to bring beauty into the world. That's a lot. 
there's a lot more going on there than I build things. But we come to this spot where we're able to do it, and then we always tag the line for the benefit of others. Yeah. It becomes mm -hmm. this sacrificial cool. act that we're doing to bring this to the world. And I think when you get that aligned right, the world then goes, oh, yeah, please never stop doing that. Yeah, that's good. Right? Well, and it's, it's on a competitive field, too, because the, the level that you're um, developing and building in is it is a higher – it's like at a premium level custom mm -hmm. kind of bigger scale yep. development versus like you know there are other plays you could make even in the construction world where you might say um that's safer less risky yeah yeah so you you've clearly have a competitive drive yep. to be on a on a field if you will where where the stakes are higher yep you know you're, you're having to analyze your your moves every move it's you know am i going to make the cut no. Week to week. I mean, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, especially in startup mode, they're totally thinking every Tuesday's way. cut day. <laughs> totally feel that. Right. Way. I mean, am I going to am I going to pay? Am I going to make payroll? I mean, yeah. those are the real things. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then at some point there can be a level of arrival of um, success where some of that pressure yeah. is alleviated. Hopefully at that point, those types of people learn how to self uh, induce that type of competitiveness rather than just get lost in, in the mm -hmm. comfort mm -hmm. and become too stable and mm -hmm. safe, you know, but it's interesting to see how fo the football field has moved now into, you know, your development field and, yep. and you're doing a lot of that in the same way, you know, what you're doing there, you're doing that here. Yeah. You see the same attribute in mm -hmm. how you're approaching development, right? How you play football. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely pushing, <clears throat> Definitely pushing the boundaries mm -hmm. um, in what, I guess on the football side, it would be pushing the boundaries of what my body can do so that come game time, I'm game ready. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely pushing the boundaries. I have that mentality, like I'm going to push. I mean, what, what I'm building in Reading, it's not normal. And so there is a little bit of anxiety behind, I'm building something that I haven't seen in Reading. Mm -hmm. And I'm going for it. Mm -hmm. And that makes me have anxiety. <laughs> from that yeah, time. it might not work, right? It, it might not. Yeah. But I'm gonna go after it. And but at the same time, I'm like, I'm like, this is gonna work. Yeah. Like, it, like someone asked me, well, what, what if it doesn't sell? And I'm like, that's what? Yeah. I I was like, who? You're talking I, to the I, best I, best builder ready. I literally thought to talking? myself, who thinks like that? Yeah. I didn't say that to them, but I was like. I don't, that's not an option. That's what I said. I said, well, that's not an option. But like, he's like, no, no, James, be realistic with me. Uh -huh. Is it a possibility that these don't sell? Yeah. And I said, I, I, I literally had to think and process it and go, oh, there is a possibility. There is like a 1%, I said, there's like a 1% chance that these won't sell. <laughs> and then I thought to myself and I go, oh, this is me doing what I do. Right. This is me like all in on this mm -hmm. and and knowing that, it's gonna work. Yeah. And the fact that I even put a one percent, there's much higher percentage than one percent that it could fail. <laughs> but I didn't I this I don't think like that. Right. That's just not my mentality. I know that it's possible. So what is the right place for that that that's a thing that you do that we'd call this one of your value creation mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Right. We we don't wanna stamp this out. In fact, we want it we want more of it. But we want more of it in the right place and less of it in the wrong place. Can you see? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know this is gonna hit that spot. Yeah. Wrong place? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you see where the right place for this is, and where the wrong place would be? The right place for what? For this. Okay, so your capacity to think. No, this is going to work. I'm going to win. It's basically a, a trusting yourself that you'll figure it out. That's how I would describe that. Uh, yeah, it's, I'll do the work yeah. and I'll figure it correct. out. Correct. Right. And. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Can you imagine? I know you can imagine places where that's helpful. Because you do yep. it all the time. <laughs> yep. Can you imagine places where it's not helpful? Where you need to actually turn that off and do something else? I mean, that's a question for you. <laughs> do you know people who, like, I like? I think if you turn it on and put your mind towards something, it's not whether you're going to win. It's when are you going to win. So firefighting? Nursing? PA? that Those were... 
those were decisions that I made because when I left playing in yeah. the NFL, I decided that I would never do anything for money. And so what happened is I got caught in this trap of firefighter, a lot of money, nurse, a lot of money, PA, a lot of money. And I was going down this rabbit hole to find something that I liked doing. But what happened is I, was, I realized that I was doing all that stuff for money. I was doing it so that I could have a six-figure salary. Okay. And then develop and then build. And then do the stuff that I thought right. that I could, that I really wanted to do. And it got to this point when I built that little ADU, and I'm like, oh, why don't I just do why don't it? Why just go do it? Why don't right? I just do it and not, right. not try to make money so that I can do the thing that I feel like I'm meant, meant to okay, do? Okay, so sit with me for a second on this. I would suggest to you that you could have, so that that was means to an end thinking. Yep. I need to go through these means to get to this end. Yep. And you could have gone 110% into that thinking. And spent 30 years winning at the, I need to get enough oh, money. Yeah. Okay. I right? see where you're going. Yep. You <clears throat> could have won that game. Yep. But that was a dumb game. But Because you could just good. go I do like the it. thing. Yep. J right? And sometimes means to an end is correct. Sometimes that's actually yep. how it has to work. Like if you want to have grandkids, you're going to have to deal with raising your own. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. a means to an end yeah. that's actually true. Correct. Right? But this one, it wasn't true at all. Had you invested yourself hardcore into that plan and done it for all your and That's figured fair. it. I see where you're going. Right. Yep. And and I think this goes back to the days of <clears throat> dissecting foot placement, hand placement. I mean, we would watch so much game film. Uh -huh. S practices. We watch practice film. Uh -huh. And I would we want, oh my foot. Instead of like here it was here uh -huh. and you guys would never know the difference no and what happened is during those times i was dissecting like hey the, like this is why am i doing this mm -hmm. like i could do this but why am i doing it and in each step of the way i was like okay this is this isn't for me it's not about winning or losing or that i failed at this stuff i didn't fail at that i realized you that learned from it i learned from it yeah. yeah and i actually tell if i'm mentoring somebody i just say hey just Go get a job doing something. Yeah, start there. You, you start. Go get a job and do it. I promise you, you will learn what you like and right. what you don't like. And if you don't like it, then find something else. It's not about winning or losing. In that point, it was about I was trying to become a firefighter so that I can make a lot of money in the Bay Area. And that wasn't going to get you where you needed to go. No. Here's another way to think about this. A lot of people who in a very who hold the idea of winning will tell you that winning is everything. Right? It's yep. just it's the only thing there is winning, winning, winning. And then they and when they hold that poorly. They end up saying something like, you know, well, well winners never quit <laughs> and quitters never win. And I think that's, that's really, going. really, really bad advice. Yeah, it is. I think what's true is you end up quitting almost everything, <laughs> right? To find the thing that you truly are going to give your life to. Yeah. The, the, they often that's hear good. people say, what hill are you willing to die on? And I think that's wrong. It's what hill are you going to die on? Yeah. That it's that death process that actually gets you to the win. And there, not all hills are worth dying on. Those yeah. ones you quit. I, I think this is a, an interesting concept as adults, as an adult. Yes. I get to pick what is a win and what is a loss. Mm -hmm. That's actually interesting, isn't it? It is. Uh -huh. And so I get to choose. Like, I don't consider those losses. Correct. But, but you know you know what I win at every morning? What's that? It's something that I set up for myself. Uh -huh. I go to the gym every morning at 530. Uh -huh. It means nothing to no one else. Right. But it starts my day off with a win. Right. I get to dictate that. It may not be a win for anybody else. But through life, I get to decide what are wins mm -hmm. and what are losses. And I definitely know when I take an L. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely know. Mm -hmm. But I use those as opportunities to pivot or set my foot in a different position or drive differently. Yeah. I'm talking and football now terms, the concept but... of winning has transcended the win-lose dichotomy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's interesting. Now, at that level, actually, I think that this is a mindset that you click on and don't click off. Yeah. But a lot of people are playing the win-lose game in a in a in a dualistic frame, mm -hmm. that's tough. It's not interesting. The way the way you're setting it up, mm -hmm. th that would be tough. Right. I yeah that, that that would be a really tough way to live. Well, and I think at some point we grow through the winning because I think I think we all have passions and things that we would say I'm going to win at that. Yeah. Like I, even the most harmonious person who's the peacemaker. Yep. 
of all peacemakers. It, there's a competitive bone in them somewhere. You just got to yeah. find it. Mm -hmm. So there comes a point where that's true. We, we grow maybe one way to look at it is we say it's not about winning at everything, but it's about we, we, we transition to go we're going to win at the right things. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And so then we get to pick and decide now yeah. what are the things that I'm going to say I'm going to win. And, I, and then what we even say is I'm winning at these two because I'm choosing not to play there. Yep. So I actually... You didn't. You didn't beat me at that. I I surrendered that. So Absolutely. that's actually I was fooling. Which is a control. massive victory. Yeah. Massive win. Which is which is winning. So we're we're talking about lions and we're talking about winning, right? Yeah. Those two ideas have emerged as we've been dialoguing, um, but we're also talking about doing that in a transcendent way, if to use that word, mm -hmm. and that there's a way in which everybody can end up a lion. There's a yeah. There's a way in which we go past the win-lose competitive frame and we begin to understand that we are authoring our own lives. We are creating the games mm -hmm. that we're playing. We get to decide what a win is. And when that happens, what I, what I think is going on there is we start to pay attention to our internal um, world, not necessarily just the scoreboard. You can't lose track of the scoreboard in life. Right? That's, that's a really cool measuring stick for what's going on in, in the world. But what game am I going to play becomes one of the questions. And that's an intrinsically motivated thing. I'm going after that. That's the hill I'm willing to die on. Um, in your, in, as you've navigated through life, because I think, I think as you've told this story to us, you're actually resonating with that transition. Yeah. How do I figure out how to get out of this world that was designed for a particular kind of competitive winner yeah. and then go into a world where that's still, we still have room for that. We still want that in this world, but there's more going on. There's different mm -hmm. kinds of games yep. going on. Right. And you come to this spot where you have to pick the game you're playing. And to do that well, which I think you have, it's, it's an intrinsically motivated game. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can you help us understand what intrinsically motivates you to win besides just the scoreboard at a football game, right? The first thing that comes to mind is just being great. Yeah. Which I'll try to dissect that or okay. yeah. <laughs> unbox play, play with that. It. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but but it's, it's about being great. And ultimately what being great means to me is – um, I love the play on words and the tale of the talons because it 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 talks about like taking what in my opinion taking what God has given you and three x and get four x and get being the best that you can at the things that you have that you have been given. Yeah. And so the reason why I love the the play on words because it actually is talking about money, but it also is called a talent. Right. And so it's like I I learned I think I was about twenty seven or twenty eight when I realized that I felt like I was squandering my talent, mm. that God had given me a talent. Um, and I literally was sitting on it. Right, just showing up. J just showing up, sitting right. on my hands, letting the God-given thing that he gave me, and I was squandering it. And so what intrinsically motivates me is I love beautiful things, and I love building, and I love design, but ultimately the heart of why I do what I do is is that I'm not I don't want to squander what God has given me. I've been given what seems to me is a great talent. Like I am a someone asked me how do I get into this? I said be good at Legos. If you can see the box of Legos and dissect it in your mind and put it back together, I can do that in in my mind. That's the a gift that God has given me um and leading slash coaching people. And so I say leading, I don't say coaching, but let's say leading people. Um, and for me to squander that, that is something that I feel like is one of my intrinsic motivations mm -hmm. is to basically is to make sure that I am capitalizing on the things that God has given me, mm -hmm. the talents that God has, that God mm -hmm. has given me. Yeah. Uh, and, and there, and there's more to that. I, 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 um, outside of like spiritually like i just want to be good at whatever it is that i'm doing mm -hmm. i don't i don't know where they came from like i just want to be the best i don't it's actually one of the variables of intrinsic motivation intrinsic motivation has built within it this pursuit of mastery huh it is part of, versus external motivation is often the pursuit of fame status and power yeah i don't care about that right <laughs> i just want to be the absolute best mastery yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a very human um, proposition, yep. but it comes from inter an internal space. I want, I want someone to walk into something that I built, 
and Damn. not see a single mm. flaw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and not because I I want that. Ultimately, I want to walk in mm. and not be able to sing, see a single bad cock line. Everything's lined up, color perfect, drywall perfect. That's what I'm shooting for because that's what I want. And every I get an opportunity every year, every month to just get things a little better. And the motivation is me. Like, I just want it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I shoot for 95%, but I'll take a 92. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, they say, too, intrinsic motivation, one of the ways you measure it is the reward is in doing the thing itself. Yeah. yeah. So in, in the beauty that you're actually creating, that is the reward. Yep. Whereas others would say, no, it's the money I make as a result, result of that, or yeah. it's the the attention or the... You know, whatever it is, I, I think it, it goes back to what you're talking about. Yeah. Do you like to eat? <laughs> or do you like, like the, the process? Or do you like the process of becoming excellent for yourself? Yeah. Right. Not so that you can tell me I'm great. I don't yeah. need that. Yeah. It, I'm not going to say that it doesn't feel good. No, it's feedback. Like, yeah. So like, once in a while, I'll someone will say, dang, this is really nice. And I go, oh, I kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. That that felt good. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it, but that's not what I'm seeking. Mm -hmm. I, I can pat myself on the back and be like, oh, this is mm -hmm. this is really good. This is really, I mean, we, we're building something right now and we just finished it. Mm -hmm. I got to design it. I got to build it with my own money. And I look back and I go, dang, this is really cool. If someone wanted to buy it, how would they do that? <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Joshua Johnson. <laughs> um, give yeah. him a call yeah. uh, and he will set you, set you up. up. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, That's awesome, James. I like, I like the place we're landing this this is this is a full circle from um i think from a journey of of drive without knowledge of what's even driving you yeah to a mid a mid 27 that's not mid anything but later in life right this idea of wait a minute this is mm -hmm. this isn't the way everybody thinks yep. this is something i have that is distinct and i need to take responsibility for it i need to actually deliver on it and then reconnecting to that lion because that lion is going to go out and deliver. That yep. lion will engage. Right? Yep. He'll wake up. He'll wake up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you put him in the right position. But <clears throat> I'm not sure if we're landing it, but but I do want to mention it, this. Um, it One of my buddies who I played football with was running a company, and he asked me to build a table for him, help him design his office. So I said, yeah, I'll do it. On my part, like when I was off of work, I would just kind of help him out, build stuff. And he, he kind of started it. Mm -hmm. I was about 27, 28. And he just said, James, what the fuck are you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes it takes somebody to like, and I was like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Like, first of all, why are you cussing at me? Don't, <laughs> we don't cuss at each other. And he's like, dude, you, he kind of said a similar thing. He's like, dude, this is dope. Right. Like, why are you wasting? This is a thing. Yes. Like, what you're doing is a thing. Like, yeah. people want people want this. And you're wasting your time playing paramedic, playing firefighter. <laughs> what are you doing? And it really got me thinking, like, dang, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And it literally started this cycle of, like, me walking down and trying to figure out, dang, what, what should I be doing? And I still turned away from it. I still was like, nurse. Yeah. PA. That's not a thing. Yeah, I was like, but ultimately, like, I should have been in this lane. Right. It's. I think it's incredibly risky in a way that we don't have words for because we're not risking money. We're not. It's not like we got get a big loan to get this. That's not the risk. Yeah. Maybe it is, but there's a deep, deeper risk, and the risk is actually showing up as the best version of yourself so far. You run the risk of it not working out. Yeah. You run the risk of failure, and there's, I think, this feeling that some of them you don't have words for, but it's like, if I risk, if I go do that thing, and it turns out it's not a thing, am I a thing? Yeah. Because their identity is wrapped up in it, and we get that we get that wrong, but it's how it feels, right? You cannot fail at being you. You can you're allowed to fail at doing you, right? And and I I would argue mm -hmm. that on the flip side is maybe that doesn't exist, but I think people haven't figured out what the doing them is. Correct. That's the and maybe you got to get there too. To. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like how do we? I've had an opportunity to mentor some people, but how do we get to the point where you know what you want to do? Mm -hmm. A couple decades. Yeah. <laughs> is that is that what it is? And even then it's questionable. Yeah. Yep. The <laughs> embedded in this idea is that you figured out what you want to do. 
Yes. But what's real is you figured out what you want to do next that is a better environment in which to release what you currently understand is what you're good at. Yes. But you're not done learning who you are and what you're about and what you're good at. This experience is going to reveal another thing. You're like, holy smoke. Wait, there's more? Right? You are more interesting, more complex, bigger than you will ever contain. Mm -hmm. So the notion that you can know yourself is somewhat false. You can know something about yourself, but the unknowing of yourself is just as important. And the unknown about yourself is what makes you interesting. And if you ever think you figured it out, now I know what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Oh, oh careful. <laughs> I, I know Although what, you have to activate into what you currently know yes. in order to get to the next thing. I know what I want to dabble in. Mm -hmm. um, I know I want to dabble in the world of building stuff, but that looks like... All kinds of things yeah. fall into that camp. Right? I could easily currently it's buildings. I could play superintendent role. Mm -hmm. I could venture capital role. I mean, there's there's a whole gamut or spectrum of things that I can mm -hmm. do. And right now, I want to be more the development side. Yeah, mm -hmm. is casting vision, coming up with plans, and hiring someone to then build it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to build it anymore. I think that's cool. But what if I could take myself and then mm -hmm put it everywhere and build a whole bunch of cool stuff. And that's where my mind is now. And it, it no way I was there 30 in when I was 30. Yep. I didn't even know it was possible. Yep. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for spending the afternoon with us. Yeah. No, thank you guys for Appreciate having me. Appreciate to hear your story. Keep building cool stuff. <laughs> we need someone to. Yeah. Might as well be you. <laughs> <laughs>